Welcome back to Looking Above. We are so glad that you have joined us, that you are here with us, and that you are on this journey with us as we this spring are just diving into the topic, the experience, the wonder, the confusion of prayer. It is so many things. And I think some of us are already starting to feel overwhelmed. Like, wow, we're, you know, this many weeks in and every week we're learning about a new form of prayer. And this is so much to grasp. Mm -hmm. And, um, my kids and Paul often have this discussion and he talks to them all the time about as they go through life and as they maybe encounter a leader that they don't really appreciate or, uh, you know, as they're going to their classes and some of what they're learning is hard. He says to them, you are filling a toolbox, a toolbox that you're going to use throughout your life. And so when you encounter something that's hard or that you don't understand or something that you just don't like, you learn from that situation. You put tools in your toolbox so that when you're in that situation, maybe you handle it differently. Mm. And I think this is a lot similar to what we're doing right now is that we are putting tools into our prayer toolbox. We are learning about all these different ways that we can pray. And hopefully we're practicing them as we go through this semester in order that as we go through life and we encounter different experiences, we're going to have tools to just draw from and utilize in those moments. So we don't do every single thing every single day. Right. We don't <laughs> need to practice 19 forms of prayer or however many, you know, this book has 19 chapters. That's why I say 19. But we don't need to do all of these forms of prayer every day or even every week. Mm -hmm. Some of them, yes, are things that we're going to draw from daily and tools that, you know, like a mechanic has his favorite tools, right? I'm sure Steven has certain, you know, a certain wrench that he's like, this is mine. You know, like, I love this guy. And, and that we go to regularly and daily, but then there's other tools that are like special occasion tools, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Kelly doesn't use the blowtorch all the time. So he then, wishes he could, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> right. So then he pulls out those specialty tools for special occasions. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with prayer, you know, is that there's going to be things that we're going to utilize all the time. And then there are things that in certain instances, we're like, oh, wait, I know how to pray. Mm -hmm. I know what to do here. So as we continue through this, we just encourage you to just keep learning and keep practicing, um, practicing these tools so that you fill your toolbox and can draw from all of these things yeah. that we're learning about when you need them. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to have ones that we feel really confident in and like, oh, I got this down. And some that we do not. Mm -hmm. And I've been experiencing that as we've been learning yes. too. So <laughs> yes. and maybe we'll talk more about that in a yeah. minute. But yeah, it yes, there's some that are just going to work. And <laughs> yeah, and personality mm -hmm. and life experience, all of that is going to play into into that as well. So as we start, why don't we go to prayer? Yes, sounds good. All right. Holy Father, we love you. We bless your name. God, you are so worthy. You are so holy, so far above us. And um, we're just in awe that you even let us come into your presence. God, when we consider, you know, as David did so many times in the Psalms, how small and how finite we are. It is incredible that you want to be in relationship with us, that you want to talk to us, that you want us to talk to you. And we thank you. We thank you for the privilege that we have of being in prayer. We thank you that we live in the time in history where we can go directly to you, that we don't have to go through someone else um, in order to um, speak to you or to hear from you. So we just, we thank you for that. We thank you for your nearness to us, your presence in our lives, God, and that we are so apt to ignore and forget about. And, you know, as we talked about the ordinary last week and just the fact that you are with us all throughout our days, God, we pray that, um, as we learn today about the prayer of rest, that we would continue to draw from that awareness of your presence, that we would experience rest in you. God, we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the honor. We thank you for the blessing of prayer. And it is in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. 
So today, which yes. one are we talking yes, about? We are, I just said it in the prayer. Yes. We are praying or talking about the prayer of rest, which is a very interesting to me. And I probably would have never titled like there is a prayer of rest. Yeah. I probably never would have said um, that was a type of would have prayer. said that that was a type of prayer. I think what we are learning is that all of life is prayer should be prayer. We are in constant communication with God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just over and over being reminded, like, I am the temple of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Like he is with me everywhere I go. He hears my thoughts. Like everything I think is prayer. Mm -hmm. Everything I do is prayer, you know, because it is communication to him and about him always. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever really thought about this before I read this book, but this was one of the um, forms of prayer specifically that when I read this book just hit me and resonated with me. And maybe it was because I read this at the end of last year when I was in my year of rest, right? Rest was my word of the year last year and just struggled with <laughs> trying to understand that all year. And God kept saying, I am your rest. And finally, as I am learning and trying to practice the prayer of rest, I'm finally think I'm starting to grasp what he meant. Yeah. But this is a form of prayer that I think you have just like run way ahead of me on um, something that you were called to years ago mm -hmm. and early really in your like my walk, your walk, yeah. right? Like you had had like some faith background, mm -hmm. but when God really like kind of got a hold of you and was like, Let's go. Let's go yeah. deep. This was something that you started practicing almost immediately and took you from like where you were to like, oh, it was crazy. So, so deep, mm -hmm. so fast. And we've talked a little bit about it here before, but I'd really like you to just for those that maybe haven't been with us for multiple seasons, yeah. talk a little bit about that. Like, what did that look like? How did you even know where to begin? So it was different for me because I, like you said, it was earlier in my walk with God. My, I was just learning about, about what a relationship with him meant. I really didn't have a good grasp on it. Um, and so the only reason that it even happened was organically with God. Mm -hmm. And like we said, there's some things that are naturally mm -hmm. going to be easier for some people and some things that are going to be more challenging. Mm -hmm. This one was more easy for me. So he mm -hmm. spoke a lot through this type of prayer to me. Mm -hmm. um, so when it started, I've had some traumatic things happen in my life mm -hmm. and I hadn't really dealt with them. Um, I actually had some friends that kind of betrayed me and it hurt me at the time. And I felt really alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'd ever really felt like that before. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just, God started waking me up in the mornings. Um, and I just remember him saying like, don't speak, don't come to me with mm -hmm. what you want, just be quiet. So I would, I would, I would just sit and I would just wait on him mm -hmm. and him to speak. Mm -hmm. So, and he did. And I title this section of my life. It's not like this every single time, but this was like consecutive mornings for months mm -hmm. that he would meet me there and speak a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, and he, so I would not lead the conversation. I would not decide where it went, but he um, helped me heal from some things. And so that's why I call it my counseling because he would bring things to mind that I wasn't thinking of that I didn't even want to go back to and we worked through them together he would bring verses to my mind it was really just listening to him and letting him counsel me mm -hmm. um, and then it freed me from a lot of things it was yeah. really cool yeah. <laughs> so keywords that I heard you say were um still mm -hmm. <laughs> quiet <laughs> like mm -hmm. you were quiet yeah and wait I would wait on him yeah I would. And I would, I think another thing. So when that happened, I saw, obviously, this is, I was just enamored by it. I wanted to meet him there every day because we were working on so much. And it wasn't necessarily fun because there was a lot of mornings I just cried. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw the good he was doing and, and that he was really, he cared enough to meet me and speak to me like that. Mm -hmm. And it just... um made me want to go back every single morning. What 
um, would you say was like the overarching feeling that drew you back? Um, it was love. Mm. It was just that he loved me enough to not let me sit where I was mm. because without that time, I mean, he could have done other things, but without him, there's no way that my faith would be as deep as it is or my walk with Christ or just pretty much my life would not be the same. Right. Right. And I think key things also to note would be like, he drew you mm -hmm. there. And, you know, anytime that we are driven to pray, anytime that we pray, we're being called to pray, mm -hmm. you know, like the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do that, to go to God. And so like that was his grace in mm -hmm. your life to draw you there and to speak to you and say, come, but I want you to come silently. Um, that is just incredible. I think to me that, that that was how he went. But then the fact that you're saying it was love that kept me going. And I think all through scripture, right? This is the story that we have is this story of a father's love for us and that being in his presence, that's what we find. Mm -hmm. And that's why I value it so much now. So you say I'm so good at it, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I just want to meet him. And so mm -hmm. I love my two hours I used to have in the morning and I talked about it a lot, but I miss it. But, and I still mm -hmm. get it sometimes, <laughs> but it's not as as every day as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get back there. But it's because I love to meet him and he meets me there. It's not, right. yeah. Right. But it did, it did, I guess, take practice too, because at the beginning it wasn't easy. My mind would wander. Our brains are made to work. Mm -hmm. And that kind of is why we have to practice this prayer mm -hmm. of rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and definitely even now there are days um, so during that time, I really do feel like God was helping me so much in that. But mm -hmm. there are days where I have to really be disciplined now to mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. and set mm -hmm. my phone outside of the room mm -hmm. or um, refocus my brain a thousand times. Mm -hmm. So it's not like mm -hmm. every day is miraculous like that was right. to me in that yeah. time. Yeah. So this is something, you know that I just struggle with being still. You all know this. <laughs> like we've talked about this, mm -hmm. right? We, we hash this out over and over. Karen is not a still person and not a quiet person. Like that is not how I was created. Mm -hmm. I was created to have high energy and to go and to do and to think. And, and so this is definitely discipline for me. Mm -hmm. Like this is, um, like when you said some of the prayers are going to come more easily and some are going to be harder. This one is just harder for me. And so, um, you know, since we talked about covenant prayer, I've been, I covenanted that God, I would get up and spend an hour with him in prayer every morning before I went into my Bible reading and devotional time that I already had been doing. So I wanted to just like have this extended chunk of time and covenant, like I'm going to do this. So I've been doing this. And in that, I've been trying to like set aside the first 10 or so minutes mm -hmm. and practice this and be quiet before I'm like, okay, now let's get to work, God. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to pray about this and we're going to like, and what do you want to pray about? Like, let's, let's talk. But I, then I'm like, I want to go. Right. So I've been trying to discipline myself 10 minutes to just be quiet and be still and be in his presence. And it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard for me for even 10 minutes. And then this week I felt like God said, nope, you're going to spend the whole hour just in my presence. And so this is now like going against every fiber in my being <laughs> to just be quiet. And when you say like you had to redirect your mind, like I, my mind just starts to like shoot in a direction and I'm like, whoa, I'm sorry, God redirect. Okay. Be quiet. Focus on God. Like try and listen. Mm -hmm. And then my mind is off in another direction and I don't even realize it till I don't know, you know, I'm three, four minutes into thinking on this thought and then I'm redirecting again, which, you know, Foster would say there's beauty in that. And every time we turn back to God is, yeah. is beautiful. But to me, it feels like I am failing at this. Mm. I'm not good at it, you know? And so there's a piece of me that then feels like, 
well, maybe I just, this is not my kind of prayer and I want to move on. Except but for I, that God's called you to but it. But <laughs> I don't think that's the right response. Yeah. And so I, when I say all of this, I say it's all of us who are struggling maybe with a form of prayer and just saying like, this is not natural. This is clunky. This does not feel good mm-hmm. to like me. Like you might not have the experience that I did at first mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. where it did feel natural. There's mm-hmm. definitely days even now that I do feel like it's clunky and days that I, that God doesn't say anything really loud to me or mm-hmm. monumental that is life changing. Mm-hmm. It's not, they're not all like my as I said, I titled it the counseling sh- mm-hmm. session with God. Yeah. So one thing that I, th- that I think is worth noting, and you mentioned this to me, is that just because we are um, resting before God, not bringing our agenda, we're being more quiet and just being with mm-hmm. him. That's really what this is about is just being with him does not mean that our minds are void. Right. I don't just sit there with a blank mind. I actually... Right. That's Hinduism and we don't do that. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't even think it is possible for me to do that. Right. It's a mind that I focus on God in his presence, like you said. Mm-hmm. And and really it is resting in him. It's like, oh, like I'm with you. Mm-hmm. And then just being at peace with that. Mm-hmm. But, and there are some times where I just sit in that peace, but... Sometimes, like I said, God will lead the conversation and I don't say, be quiet. Like, <laughs> we're just sitting here today. <laughs> um, I let That's him awesome. lead it. Yeah. <laughs> and so right. my mind isn't, it's not quiet. It's right. not void. Like right. You it's you not taking yeah. the helm, letting him yeah. steer I'm and not, him yeah. speak bringing my agenda like you said right right so I think that I think that's important for us to note is mm-hmm. that this doesn't mean like nothing is happening up mm-hmm. here but um, when I'm saying I struggle with it I'm very much like my mind starts going and it's me trying to plan what I need to do for my day or plan the next event that I'm doing or you know I can like spin off in a direction where I'm trying to be productive Mm -hmm. and that's not what this form of prayer is necessarily about. No, it's not. What are we going to do to fix all of these problems? Of Mm -hmm. course, God can lead it there sometimes, but yeah, it is resting in him. Yeah. So I do that too. Sometimes, um, my life's a little different. So, but it'll be like, Oh, I did not get groceries or I need to get the kids up in 10 minutes. So I'm watching the clock. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is strategizing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm strategizing how to get ahead, Mm. which is the opposite of resting in God. Mm. So practicing for me to just know that he's going to take you. I can spend this time with him. Yeah. So the other thing that this all makes me think about when we talk about like that, it's going to be clunkier for some of us or more difficult or not feel natural. Um, I just think about my kids and I think about love languages. Hmm. So um, Daniel, for instance, is definitely a, what, like a time, you know, yeah. like the intentional quality time, quality time mm-hmm. kind of person. Like he will often just want me to be in his presence. So even if we're not talking, like he just wants to be a side of me, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, mom, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play my game and you can sit here and paint, but can you just be with me? He'll always say, mom, can you just come downstairs with me? Right. He just wants to be in my presence. Mm-hmm. Um, Valerie, especially when she was littler, she used a physical touch. So she was a, she would call it cuggling. <laughs> it was snuggle, cuddling, cuggling. Oh, um, that's but cute. She always wanted to cuggle. Like she wanted to curl up on the couch and be like, physically touching you, you know? And so I think about my kids and then I think, you know, then I have Andrew and he is not a physical touch kind of kid. And so when I try and hug him, we've talked about this before, like he is so awkward and like stands rigid and is like, I don't love this mom, but I will let you hug me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not natural to him. And I think that, you know, like some of these kinds of prayers just aren't natural and are going to feel a little awkward to us but we have to remember that all of this is conversation and all of it is expressions of love like you were saying you felt love it's always that we're communicating love to God and God is communicating love to us and so just because Andrew doesn't 
like hugs or it doesn't feel the most natural to him does not mean I don't hug him. Well, the thing with love languages is too. Um, so my husband and I are different mm-hmm. and I'm sure if you're married, I it's probably more rare to have the same love language, mm-hmm. um, which that would be great. That would make awesome. so That's, easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's reason for that. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I, so when Stephen is doing acts of service for me, even though that is not how I necessarily receive love mm-hmm. the best, I still know that he is showing me love. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so I choose to receive it as, mm-hmm. oh, he's saying he loves me right mm-hmm. now. Even though that's not naturally how right. I would receive it. Right, right. So I'm sure Andrew does the same. He's right. like, my mom loves me. And yeah. it still means something. Yeah, yeah. So a form of prayer may not naturally be the way that you're going to best communicate with God but doesn't mean we don't try it. Doesn't mean we don't do it, you know, and sometimes, sometimes our acts of love are a sacrifice. And so for me right now to try and practice this, like I am having to crucify my flesh. Mm -hmm. I am having to die to myself to be obedient to God's call to stillness and to the prayer of rest. Mm -hmm. Which I think is so powerful. Like to be cruci- like mm-hmm. to be crucified, mm-hmm. um, like Christ. Yeah. In those parts that are yeah. so hard. I don't know. I yeah. always see the most growth and like in those areas is where I feel like I get closest to God. Right. When right. you have to rely on him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think you're a hundred percent right. Doesn't make it fun. <laughs> I just want to say the very human part of No, me, I get it. it. Like just kind of rails against it and not not like I'm doing it reluctantly, no. but just that my flesh is struggling to, to, to do mm. this and to do this well. Um, so one thing that I've been thinking about, or one story in the Bible that I've been thinking about a lot is Mary and Martha. And I think that it just illustrates this so well. And clearly I am Martha. Like I am a Martha, even in prayer. Like I want to do and I want to accomplish in prayer. And I know that prayer is powerful, right? Like the Bible says a prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And I'm like, yeah, like, let's go. I want to do something today, yeah. God. You Which know? isn't bad. Right. That isn't bad. Right. When that's what I'm called to yeah. do. <laughs> but when we look at that story, then there sat Mary at Jesus's feet, quiet and still and resting in his presence, you know, mm. and just the relationship and the love. Like, and Jesus says, you know, she's chosen the better thing. Mm-hmm. And that's so confusing to us when we think with our fleshly mind, because we're so conditioned to busyness and productivity and activity that to think that being still and quiet is the better thing. It's like, what, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and this is like, I feel like every time I'm trying to charge ahead in prayer, like even in this last few days, I feel like I start to like, think like, Hey God, okay, what are we going to do about this? Or I think of a person and I start to pray about that. And then I feel like I'm constantly just being like, Oh, Martha, <laughs> you know, like I, like I hear that and I'm like, right. I need to be quiet right now. Mm-hmm. Not saying that everyone's called to mm-hmm. quiet and to stillness all the time. That's yeah. not it. But that is what I'm being called to. And we've talked a little bit about, and I want us all to learn as we go through this, the most important thing in prayer is to allow prayer to be spirit-led, mm-hmm. to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us or to grow to that place, right? So, and I think that's really maybe the joy and the blessing of prayer of rest is learning to not take control. Yeah. Which is so funny because I, I love control. Like it's one of the thorns in my side. Like I have a hard time not having control. We all do. Yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah, we all do. And so it's strange that that time for me is easier, but I will say that throughout the day is still really hard for me. Mm. It does make it easier when I draw from that time, when I have spent that time in rest, mm-hmm. prayer, restful mm-hmm. prayer in the morning, mm-hmm. but it's still a challenge for me. And it's mm-hmm. because 
I was talking to you about this earlier, but uh, dependency on God or anyone is so countercultural. So this whole thing, it's so mm-hmm. countercultural. Mm-hmm. And so it's just hard, especially when you're out and about and right. Yeah. Throughout yeah. Your day. We want to be independent mm-hmm. and we want to accomplish things. We, we want to be productive, even in our prayers, especially maybe in our prayers, you know, yeah. Like, um, Sarah and I were talking the other day and she's like, you know how people always say like, I'll pray for you. It's the least I can do. And, you know, and she's like, no, it's the most you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's this, it's that verse I just quoted. It's powerful and effective. Like there is so much that can be accomplished in prayer. But one of the things that Foster talked about in this chapter is God's role in prayer, mm-hmm. you know, and, and he talked about, you know, when we pray, scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit kind of takes and interprets our prayers, right? Mm-hmm. And he speaks straight to God in um, groanings, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like he, he, he takes our prayers and interprets them to God's heart somehow, you know, yeah. like maybe changes them, maybe refines them. Yeah. And then... Uh, He talks about Jesus being the great high priest. And we see that idea in the book of Hebrews that Jesus is our great high priest. And what did the high priest do? The high priest was an interceder. So literally, like when we think of prayer, especially the prayer of intercession, which we'll talk about next week, um, that's like going to God on someone's behalf. So we have the Holy Spirit who's like taking and interpreting our prayers. And we have Jesus who is praying for us. Then we have God who is ever attentive to our prayers and always listening and seeing and hearing. Right. So we see the work of this triune God in prayer on our behalf. And this is what allows us to participate in the prayer of rest. And this is where God has been speaking to my heart, particularly in this past week, is that Karen, you, you don't do all the work Mm -hmm. and you don't have to do all the work. Yes. Are there times that we are called to work in prayer? Yes. But right now God is teaching me what it means to rest in prayer and to trust him that the prayers are continuing Mm -hmm. and that the work will be done and that I don't have to do. Yeah. So it's surrender, surrendering your prayers, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Releasing. And like, I literally did that the other day where I was like, these are all the things, God, that I feel like I've been called to intercede. And I just took them one by one. And a friend said, like, just envision yourself handing them to God. And so I did. I just went through them the other morning and was like, okay, you're going to take them and you're going to handle this. You're going to continue this prayer that you already know is on my Mm -hmm. heart. And in my set aside time of prayer. I'm just going to come and be still and quiet before you trusting that those things are being taken care of. And so I think that trust when you're, you know, you're talking about learning to be dependent. Trust is a huge piece of the prayer of rest Mm -hmm. because we have to trust that he's going to continue the work and that I can just be still right now and that I don't have to accomplish something in prayer. Yeah. But that's so countercultural. Why? Why is that so countercultural? Like, why are we taught not to be like that? Well, we're raised like that. Mm-hmm. Like, we are taught from the time, even Porter, who's eight months old, is taught to be independent or is naturally independent. He's naturally independent. Mm-hmm. A lot of babies are. Mm-hmm. So part of it is we are just wired <laughs> to be independent mm-hmm. um, and do things on our own. But also, I was thinking during my prayer time the other day about how we raise our children to be independent. Like that is a goal of a lot Mm -hmm. of people. And Mm -hmm. um, it's because we were taught that when we were younger, but I just want to raise them to be an independent woman, you know, Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And actually I was thinking about that and I was like, I don't want to be an, I like, I want to depend on my husband. I want to depend on God, Mm -hmm. want to depend on my friends. Right. And I was thinking about how, I don't want to raise my children that way. I want to raise Mm -hmm. them to be dependent on others, to know how to depend on others. Mm -hmm. And most of all, God. Right. But if we're taught to not even like, if we are taught, you're good if you can do everything by yourself on your Mm -hmm. own, then how do we relearn that 
to give it to God and say, okay, you do this. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times, and for me, I try to have everything fixed before I bring it to God even. Like Mm -hmm. I want to figure things out and then like, oh, here, God. This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you can fix this. I figured it out for you. Right, (laughs) Yeah. right. So yes, so a lot of prayer as we're praying, we are learning to develop trust Mm -hmm. and we're learning to develop dependence on him I think that in that and what what you're seeing what you're learning what I'm seeing what I'm learning is that our will is refined in this Mm -hmm. to where it's no longer what I want we don't come to God any longer or less less often with the answer but we come to God saying this is the issue what do you want to do about it Mm -hmm. how can I partner with you how you know how do you want me to pray And, you know, and we'll see, like, we'll talk about the prayer of healing in a few weeks too. But often when we go to God asking for someone's physical healing, God's trying to speak to us and say, that is not what's most important here. What's most important maybe is heart healing or mind healing or, you know, or spiritual healing. And we need to address that first. Mm -hmm. And so as we, as we learn all of this, what we're learning is to trust God, to be dependent on him and then to follow him into prayer. Yeah. And I think in America, we do have so much control and, and freedom. And I'm not, not grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I never want to come across. I am thankful to live here, but I've been listening to podcasts in different countries Mm -hmm. where they have it Mm -hmm. so much harder and they see death every day and they get persecuted and they have no control over what is happening. Mm -hmm. They are literally living day by day and surrendering everything to God. They're Mm -hmm. not, I was listening to one woman and she, um, they keep their identities secret Mm -hmm. and they change their voices and everything. Mm -hmm. That's how Mm -hmm. this is. But she was saying like that every day, she um, just is not scared of death anymore. She said, it's all around me Mm. and I just want to do what God wants. Mm. So I let him lead me and I watch him do things. She's not doing it. She said, I watch God move. It's just so cool to me. (laughs) Like I am thankful that I do not have to live in a place where I fear for my children's lives or my own. And I can openly talk about my love for Jesus, Mm. but seeing their dependence on him because they have no choice but to be dependent Mm -hmm. and the way he moves within that dependence has been really inspiring to me lately. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to do that here though. (laughs) I don't, I don't want to move somewhere scary, but I want to be, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) please don't call me to that. Um, But I want to be, I want dependence like that. Right. Right. And I think that the prayer of rest will foster. I think so too. Yeah. Right. Because it's not about doing. Right. It's, and it is about trusting Mm -hmm. God. Um, yeah. So I was thinking as we were preparing for this about some maybe faulty views of prayer, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and first I want to note that I think a lot of us struggle when it doesn't seem like prayer is working, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like I've been praying and it's not happening, Mm -hmm. you know? And so then we, we get in this place where we just start to struggle, like, um, This time I prayed and I got a fast answer. And this time I prayed and I got radio silence. Like Mm -hmm. nothing came back. And, you know, or this time I prayed and I got a yes. And this time I prayed and it was a hard no. Like what I wanted, what I was asking for did not happen. And so there is this mystery in prayer. And I want us to realize, recognize, learn that um, sometimes we have a faulty view of prayer but we don't give up because the prayer isn't working in the way we think it should the way we think it should right um and so the prayer of rest again is is teaching us not to come expectant on the result but expectant on the presence mm-hmm. That's so good. I want to write that down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and and so when when we when we expect results, when that's our purpose in prayer is to get a result. Mm-hmm. Not that we aren't sometimes called to that, but oftentimes what we are being called to is the presence of God. 
and then he will affect results. Yeah. And and we have to start there and we have to learn that dependence. And so let's let's think some faulty views of prayer or some ways that maybe we go to God. Um sometimes we treat God like a genie in the bottle, right? And we want to rub the lamp, like send up our prayer and get an immediate answer exactly what we said. Like, okay, God, I've already figured it out. Mm-hmm. This is what you need to do. I'm going to pray and then you're going to deliver. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> like I, I am yeah. guilty of that um, in yeah. this season, Yeah, but it's not, it's not a right view. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it is, it's treating God like a genie and it's essentially, you know, when you think of a genie in a bottle, the person who has that bottle, like we've all watched Aladdin, right? They are the master. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He answers to them. And so when we do this, we have just flipped the narrative (laughs) on its head, right? I am the master God. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do and you're going to answer me. Mm -hmm. So we come to God with our requests and not that it is wrong to request things of God, but it is wrong for us to take the perspective that I am the master here. Mm -hmm. We can ask, but we ask humbly as his child, not demanding that he behave in a certain way. So prayer of rest helps us to come to him as a child just wanting to sit in our father's lap, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I just want to be near my dad. And like, that's where I've had to try and get myself to envision. And there are times like I will actually go and sit in the corner of the room and like imagine myself like in God's arm, like being held. Like I need to just be still and near to him. Mm, Yeah, it's a hard cold wall, but that's what I'm, you know, it's, it's visualization and Foster will tell us that um, God has given us imagination as a very powerful tool. Yeah. We have a friend who lays on the floor Mm -hmm. just in soaks in the presence Mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so being able to visualize this and put myself in his arm, you know, it takes away that I'm your boss, God, and you're going to do what I want. And it reminds you that he cares about you, Mm -hmm. whether or not he he answers the prayer the way you want him Mm -hmm. to. He still cares and loves you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Sometimes we treat God like a vending machine, Mm -hmm. right? And you think about a vending machine and you like put your dollar in and Mm -hmm. push a seven and then the thing falls. Transactional. Right. Very transactional. Um, But there are times when we go to a vending machine and we put our dollar in and it spits it back out at us. And then it tells us, you know, exact change only. And then we're like fumbling to find the right change. And I think that there are times that we send up a prayer, like we put our dollar bill in expecting to get this result. And the dollar bill is like, "Mm, nope. And then we get in our mind and this is faulty, faulty view Mm -hmm. again, but we get in our mind. Oh, I need exact change. My prayer wasn't the right prayer. I need to pray differently. I need to say X, Y, and Z. And I hear people say this all the time and they'll say, you know, I prayed and prayed and prayed on this. And I just kept thinking, well, I must not be praying right. Mm -hmm. I need to change my prayer or I need to do something else or I need to go to church more. or I need to, you know, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to do this. I need the exact change in order to get the result as if there is a formula that has to be followed in order for God to give us the answer that we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which again is taught. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have, you know, that is another wrong view of prayer. And so when we look at this prayer of rest, it, it helps us to develop faith. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, when, when we talked earlier about trusting God, that the work of prayer is going to continue, even if I cease the work of prayer, even if I am still and quiet and just with God, it teaches us faith. And so sometimes when we don't see the results that we want in prayer and we're thinking, we're tempted to think prayer doesn't work or my prayers don't work or whatever. And so then we shy away from it or we quit. I think what it's trying to grow in us is a dependence, Mm -hmm. is faith that 
I'm going to keep doing this even when it doesn't seem to be working. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going to God and being with him even when I don't get the answer I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to develop faith because if God were a vending machine and every time I put my dollar in, I immediately got my result. Would there be any need for faith? No. No. If he was a genie and gave us every wish, we would never grow in faith. Yeah. And also we wish for dumb things. (laughs) So (laughs) it's good. Are not good for you. (laughs) Yeah. So there's that too. We don't know best. We are not the master. Right. Right. And so, yeah, we, we, this thing about prayer is that it is growing faith in us. It is growing an utter dependence on a God who knows what is best, Mm -hmm. gives what is best. Mm -hmm. Even when we don't agree, even when we don't like it, even when the prayer take or the answer is longer in coming than we want. It is growing faith. And we are going to have a very weak and shallow faith if we give up. Mm. If we do not persist in prayer or persist in his presence. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so I just think this this form of prayer is like taking that to a whole other level. Like it's beyond that. I'm going to keep knocking on heaven's door until I get my answer. And it's taking faith to this other level where it's like, this does not depend on me at all. Mm-hmm. And I can step almost entirely out of the picture and just put it in his hands and just be near him. Mm-hmm. Which is, yeah. It's mind boggling Mm -hmm. because we are so trained to take care of everything. Yeah. To strategize, like I was saying earlier. And the thing is, is our brains will naturally do it because we have taught it to do that from Mm -hmm. the time we were little. Mm -hmm. So it will take some time to retrain your brain that it's okay. You are safe. You don't have to strategize. You don't have to get ahead of the day. Maybe stillness is the strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, stillness is exactly what we need. And that's, you know, when God kept saying to me, I am your rest. I think he was trying to tell me, like, just let me, let me deal with all of this, Karen. Just be with me. That's your strategy right now. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to Sabbath. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, like we need to cease from working. What is Sabbath for? It is a gift to us to remind us that we are not God. Yeah. We had a friend or we have a friend, she's mm-hmm. still a friend. Um, a while back, um, they were talking about how they had just really, really busy, crazy days at work and that they decided and felt called to instead of they were, they could go in an hour early. They had that extra hour mm-hmm. to get ahead of the day. Mm-hmm. But they're still coming home every day, just so depleted. And they decided, and I and God led them to this, to set that time aside, that hour. And instead of working to get ahead, to just be with God. Yeah. And that that would actually be more productive mm-hmm. than getting ahead. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> right. And it's right. true, too. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of uh, quotes in this chapter mm-hmm. that really uh, spoke to you. Do you want to? Yes. Share that with us. So one of them was this one. Yes. Spoke to me because it convicts me, but Mm -hmm. um, all of the grasping and grabbing, all of the controlling, Mm -hmm. all of the manipulative dynamics of life exhaust us. Mm -hmm. I was like, I do. I try to manipulate things to get control, Mm -hmm. but it goes on to say, if only we could slip over into that life free from strain and anxiety Mm -hmm. and hurry. If only we could know that steady peace of God where all strain is gone and Christ is already victor over the world, Mm -hmm. which is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I want to live every moment. Like I don't just want to live that way. And the, in the time that I spend in his presence, that Mm -hmm. intentional time, I Mm -hmm. want to do that all day. How do you think we get to that? First, we start with that intentional time. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Um, But I also, I've been trying to practice this. So what I've been doing is, and I'm not good at it Mm -hmm. yet, um, 
but is just repeatedly surrendering. Mm. Um, yeah. Just the other day, I noticed I was trying to solve all these problems. And I asked my husband, I was like, will you just pray with me? Because I just need to give these back to God. Mm-hmm. These are not mine. Mm-hmm. I'm there his and he already knows. So um, practicing right. that moment by moment. Yeah. As the stressors of life come to us, just turning it right back to him. Mm -hmm. And then again, saying like, God, you already won. You already are victor. So that's Mm -hmm. really what matters. So does this Mm -hmm. actually matter? No, not really. But I mean, it feels like it does, but God God already is the winner. Right. Um, Yeah. But yeah, free from strain, anxiety, and hurry. I was like, that sounds so nice. So that's what I'm working for. (laughs) Last night, Paul and I were talking about something. And as we were talking, like I could feel that stress feeling that I get when I'm overwhelmed Mm -hmm. and I started to feel that and immediately that was a call to me to go back to this Mm. you know and it was like okay you're not resting in the Lord right now because you're you're taking something on you Mm. that's not yours and so in that moment it was again it was like picture yourself in the corner like (laughs) picture yourself curled up on his lap. Like he is here and he is holding you. And this stress does not need to consume you right now. Yeah. Yeah. He has this. It's you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly, I think what you're saying, it's surrender in, in those moments. And I think the more that we practice it, the more it will happen naturally. I think so too. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. The, um, the one thing that I noticed, um, that I noticed as I was thinking about this is I've heard recently, um, that, you know, technology was supposed to make our lives easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the advances in technology, like washing machines were supposed to cut down a woman's work and you know like you just think like all through all through history like every advance was supposed to make life easier and they had predicted years ago that you know by this point in time we would be working these really short work weeks and really short hours because technology would have done so much for us but what has it done it's actually like made us these crazy machines that just want to get even more done yeah, it's like if we get, because they, they were creating those so we had more time to rest. Right. But we do not. We will fill it with more, more work. More, we will more. just keep doing more and more and more and more. Right, right. Because we always feel like we need to get yes. ahead or even yes. more ahead. Right. And so productivity has become the idol in our society. Mm-hmm. Getting things done. It, like it is an idol idol. It is vying for our attention. It is vying for our love for God. And to think about the fact that this is even creeping into our relationship with God, Mm -hmm. that we have to be productive when God is saying, I want you to be with me. Mm -hmm. That is the source. That is the most important thing slow down and be with me. And we just talked about the prodigal son in the room this past week and talked about this idea that, you know, the son went off and did his own thing. And when he came back, the things that the father was doing, that he gave him this robe, he gave him this ring, he gave him sandals. All of this was communicating to him. I just want to be back in relationship with you. You are my son. Mm -hmm. Welcome home. Mm -hmm. And that's the feeling I think we should have when we go to God in the prayer of rest. Mm -hmm. You are my child. Welcome home. Just Mm -hmm. come be with me again. Like the father embraced his son and that's where he wants us to be is just in his embrace. Yep. Kill the idol of productivity. Like, and this is where it starts. This is where God reminds you that you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's more to life. Which it always comes back to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, always. It's. I mean, this is where we begin and end every time, yep. right? Is that our eyes have to be fixed on him. Mm-hmm. There's there's more than what we see yep. out there. Yeah. Oh boy, well, hopefully you are thinking deep thoughts like we are. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we're just, you know, struggling and journeying. And that's what this is. You know, like both of us have said today, we struggle with this. Yeah, we are not perfect. This is hard and clunky and it's taking practice. But the result is that feeling that love, Mm -hmm. feeling that approval and the desire of the Father to just be with us as well. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all looking for every day as we go into the world. We're just looking for that. We're looking for it in others. We're looking for it in social media. And producing. And producing. And God's saying, just look at me. Mm -hmm. So with that, yes, we will remind you to keep looking above.